Welcome, everyone, to the SI Media Podcast. I am your host, Jim Trana. I hope all of you who had uh, celebrated Christmas had a nice Christmas and a happy new year to everyone coming up. Stay safe in the next few days. We've got a annual year-end SI Media Podcast for you. This is the third year in a row. I end the year final podcast, final SI Media Podcast of the year with Peter Schrager from Good Morning Football and Andrew Perloff from the Maggie and Perloff Show on CBS Radio. We've... Uh, done this now like i said this will be the third year we just really just have a conversation about the year in sports media riff on a lot of things tv movies um pop culture sports best plays best media stories best people in media so hopefully you guys enjoy it if you've never heard one of these year-end episodes give us some feedback leave me a review on apple let me know how you enjoyed the pod before we get to it just a quick reminder, if you missed any recent episodes of the SI Media Podcast, strong, strong guests over the last uh, ending here to the year. Brian Curtis from The Ringer was on last week to do a little year in sports media review. Greg Olson from Fox Sports two weeks ago. Richard Deitch, who covers sports media for The Athletic three weeks ago. Mike Tirico, Kevin Burkhart, Joe Buck, Jim Nance, all on the SI Media Podcast in recent weeks. So, Go into the archives, give him a listen, subscribe, and like I said, leave a review on Apple, and we will get to it. No Sal this week. He's off celebrating. Sal will be back next week with Train of Thoughts. This this entire episode with Schrager and Perloff is one big Train of Thoughts, basically, with uh, those two awesome guys. So enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Shoot me an email, Twitter, leave a review on Apple. I uh, want the feedback as much as possible. And then, like I said, subscribe to the pod. All right, here we go. Year-end episode of the SI Media Podcast with Peter Schrager and Andrew Perloff right here on the SI Media Podcast. All right, joining me now, we've already done a podcast before we started taping the podcast, <laughs> and there's a lot going on here. Like, I'm coughing, I got like tea going, you guys might have to carry it. I've spent all morning waiting for the garbage men to give them their tip. I Now, they didn't come yet, so they might not get anything. I'm a mess. <laughs> nice. I'm going to rely on these two. For the third straight year, hard to believe, but I cannot appreciate this more, two of my favorite people in the business, joining me for our third annual year-end SI Media Podcast Roundtable Spectacular. From Good Morning Football, Fox Sports, his own podcast, Peter Schrager, and from CBS Sports Radio, formerly of the Dan Patrick Show, formerly of SI, Andrew Perloff. Gentlemen, happy holidays. Thank you for doing this. Happy Hanukkah, Jimmy. Thank you for uh, having me on your podcast with the great Andrew Perloff. I must say, for the listeners at home, I had not seen Jimmy nor Andrew uh, since we did this last Zoom. I hear them all the time, Andrew on the radio and Jimmy, of course, on his weekly podcast, which I think is among the best on the this. Apple or Spotify. Jimmy looks amazing. Jimmy, I'm not trying to yeah. uh, trying to embarrass you here. You lost a lot of weight. You look great on my Zoom right now. I could, it's, this is my Christmas treat. I'm so happy to see you looking so good and so healthy. I Wait, appreciate Peter, that. Thank you. Peter, we're neighbors. I, Peter, I think we <laughs> ran into I can't remember. I ran into you at the coffee shop. Yes. I don't even remember when. The French we, bakery, mind you, in Brooklyn, not a coffee yeah. shop. Hello. Jimmy, we have the most depressing grocery store on planet Earth is within two blocks of yeah. Peter and I. And someday we're going to be old men drinking coffee, sitting at the grocery store. We have a table yeah. there. It's a yeah. plan that we have. We've B been working on uh, bitching and yeah. complaining about everyone in sports media. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we always have been. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. I thank you for the kind words. I you know, one of the weirdest things about losing weight is that I didn't realize in this extremely woke world now that you're not allowed to say oh you look like you lost weight like you committed a big faux pas there like oh. people would say you're fat phobic you're supposed to say you look great you're not supposed meanwhile as someone who was and still is fat i want people to say you look like you lost weight i don't want to hear I, that's what i want to hear but you want the pat on the back you're not allowed to say that <laughs> well you've I, I learned at it that. that's hard I've work learned, i've learned that it's very you're, like politically incorrect so you look like you lost weight for some reason okay. oh boy this okay. is gonna get it are it's we a gonna get world canceled? out there Peter, Jimmy told me some of the rules he has to follow. Oh boy, oh, it yeah. is. Uh, it okay. is. We are walking a, a razor's edge on this podcast. I, like, I, I, I think I got, we'll be okay. I got in trouble for last year's year end podcast. Why for the for the ridiculous Wikipedia story you told, guys? For listeners here, Andrew, this wonderful erudite, you know, Ivy League man comes on to the podcast and tells us that. 
he doesn't watch the the shows. He fast forwards and reads the Wikipedia pages first, looks at the final episode, and then watches his shows. I'm still disgusted. I haven't met anyone since who said that. Now, what what is your story? So I I made an offhanded comment about a broadcaster's hair. They got back to him, and he was not happy. Oh, was it someone from NFL Network? Right. Yeah, I said, P- that, I said that I said Tom Palacero had a sharper cut in his hair than James Palmer. And <laughs> James immediately said to me, and nobody listens every week. He's like, dude, why are you ripping my hair? I'm like, I don't know. Palacero is just a slightly bit sharper. Anyway. Usually, usually I just want to shit all over everybody in media. Uh, you yeah. just named two of my favorite people. Tom oh, they're and the James. Best. I'm so lucky to work at NFL Number because the dudes are all great and the ladies too. So uh, th- I, I promise you, James Palmer was not actually upset with you that you. Oh no, he was there. Yeah, he wasn't. No, he's been giving me a hard time all year long for it. But people do listen to your podcast, Jimmy. That's true. In the industry, yeah. oh man, There's, that's a lot of pressure on you, Jimmy. I yeah. hate to say it. I mean, there's, way more, there's way more pressure right now because the garbage men just came and I couldn't. Oh, go, go, go take care of that. They're going to no, say, wow, no. wow, you look, I'll get you next look week. great and not mention you look skinny. You look great. All right, Sal, all right. the garbage man's going to say that. Yep. Terrible. All right. <laughs> all right. So let's see who gets in trouble this year. I want someone to get in trouble. It's no fun if nobody gets in trouble. Um, yeah, it's bizarre to me. Here's what's bizarre to me, and tell me if you guys experience this, because Schrager, you do, you're on TV every day, you do a radio show every day, and I write every day, and I know for me, what, what'll what happen is I'll hear from someone two or three weeks after I've written or said something on the pod, and I have no recollection, like, everything mm. is so, turns over so quickly, so someone else out of the blue will be like, oh, blah, 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 and I'm like, what is that referencing? He's like, you said that on your pod. I'm like, that's probably three weeks ago. I can't remember that at all. Do you guys have that memory problem, or is it just me? No. That's something you should be looking at, Jim. Jimmy, I don't know. If you want to see a specialist, like, immediately. Two weeks ago, you can't remember your podcast? You know what happens on for ours? Like, our show airs on NFL Network. It's three hours. I would venture that 98% of the people who see the stuff on our show see it online uh, mm. in, twe- in tweets and videos that we clip out on social media. So I'll give you an example. I made a whole case that, you know, Jalen Hurts shouldn't lose the MVP award mm. if he misses one game just because he misses one game. And if he plays the final two games, like he still was the guy for 13 and one. And the amount of Chiefs fans who have come after me and been like, that's ridiculous. Mahomes is the MVP anyway and all this stuff. Mm. And it's like, we're talking thousands and thousands of tweets because my 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 video went a little viral. And then the Chiefs fans don't realize that I've been like their biggest supporter. I right, love Patrick yeah. Mahomes. So it's, you don't, right. you're, you know, people don't know. They don't, they don't keep track of what you said versus someone else. Unless you're like Skip Bayless or maybe LaShawn McCoy now, people aren't keeping tabs yeah. on your takes. Um, you just got to come and be authentic. So, Jimmy, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be worried about what people said from two weeks oh, no, ago. I'm not worried. All that. No, no, I'm not worried. Have you, and if you want, if you want to say the player or coach, you can. Yeah. If you don't, you don't. Have you gotten in trouble? let's say this football season with any player or coach for something you say and go, because yeah, here's uh, the thing about good morning football, every yeah. single player and coach watch, they watch it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have a lot of good relationships, Peter. I yeah. wonder about that too. Like how do you be critical after a bad game? I was tough on, I was tough on Zach Wilson this week. Um, to the point where it kind of went in, in Francesa territory where it almost sounded like I was going a little overboard with it. And, you know, Sala and I talk a lot and it's a lot of big picture things, not about starting this week and and what position it's more like, you know, he lives in Jersey, he's got seven kids and what's the deal, what's your family up to all this stuff. And Sala was kind of like, tough crowd out there on your set. And I called him like, what? And he's like, he's like, I just had it on. And he's like, wow, okay. I didn't, you know, so everyone watches and. I think sometimes you're going to get a coach who will just be honest with you and be like, hey, uh, just just know we're watching. You know what I mean? Mm. He should be more concerned with his quarterback. Okay, being no, I mean, inept. this is what we're talking about, Jimmy. This is, what, <laughs> this is the problem when you when you reveal those type of things, that, that he's watching Good Morning Football. People are like, wait, he's right. watching your show instead of drawing up plays for DJ Reed to get on a corner blitz? Well, no, um, uh, my thing is I get like the coach defends his player, but Zach Wilson's been indefensible this year. And I'm not talking about on the field. I'm about off the field. He's just his attitude and his arrogance and it, with the press is just ridiculous. Do you think he's an do you think he's an do you think it was arrogance or it was just naivety? Like I think that this is a twenty three year old kid who didn't know how to handle that press conference and now it's I, like he's an arrogant punk, which I don't think he is. I think it's both. I think it's both. I think it's arrogance I, and I, I'm ahead. with Peter. I think people overrate press conferences because 
I think he was trying to protect. He said, did the offense let you down? And he said, no, because he didn't want to sell out his whole offense. But he also, also had something, though. But it, he also had an incident a week or two yeah. before that where he's like snapped about how he doesn't care about stats. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Tom Brady came out on the shop and said, I lied 95% of the time in press right. conferences. Then right. we take every word that is said at press conference. The one that gets me is Nick Sirianni's opening press conference was a train wreck, right? Yeah. And everyone assumed he was going to be a bad coach. Now we learn that that's the exact opposite. You can't judge getting the right. You can't make too many assumptions off of press. The other one would be it would be at Hard Knocks. We see Dan Campbell, and everyone's like, you know, I like this, but it's it's it it seems like this isn't going to work in the NFL. And here they are; they believe in it. So what what you see at the press conference, what you see at the podium, what you see on TV, all that matters is what happens behind closed doors, whether the players buy it. Now, Jimmy, to your point, I haven't seen a groundswell of Jets players come out and support Zach Wilson over the last six weeks. Yeah, right. And you do see them. I mean, they love Mike White. (laughs) You know. They uh-huh. love Mike White. Um, I, got trouble, I got in trouble with a player, though, if you want me to give you a quick one. Yeah. Um, I I was on Simmons' podcast, which has been a great platform for me. Everyone yeah. listens to that. And I sometimes will say things in passing and not realize that like the entire sports world listens to Bill Simmons' podcast on Fridays mm-hmm. doing million-dollar picks. And I said that Sean Payton was in town for a game against the Raiders during the week. And he stopped by the team and on Simmons's podcast, I said, he spoke to the team, gave a little pep talk, whatever they went out and they won 24 to nothing. Fact of the matter is he did not give a pep talk. He was in town and he was in the facility. And I, I said it in passing and you know, pep talk was the wrong word, obviously. And local media in new Orleans picked it up and they were like, if this is true, what an indictment on Dennis Allen. And if this is true, like what a ridiculous story that Sean Payton, who comes from the Fox booth uh, from LA sw- comes in on his chariot. And, uh, turns out I was wrong. I used the wrong turn of phrase. I, I, I hand up, whatever. And then Alvin Kamara starts like coming at me on Twitter. And I'm like, gosh, I've known Kamara oh. for his entire career. And I'm like, and then you get in that spot where you're like, do you lay down do you do it, or do you want to bite back? Cause Kamara, maybe not necessarily having the best season. And maybe it's not Peter Schrager's fault that these teams, these games, and you just got to say, all right, you got to put yourself in their shoes. The saints players, it's been a rough year. It, it, you know, Kamara is a great player. He's been a great player in this league. Just take the, take the L as you're a member of the media. You're not anyone important. So I took the L on that one. I was wrong, but that was a good lesson. Also watch what you say. And the wording actually makes <laughs> sense. So it sounds like I was an outright lie when, wasn't an outright lie. I just used the wrong right. word. It wasn't a pep talk. Well, by any you, means. But you handled it well. If you were wrong, you were wrong. And that's, you take but the hand L, up. like you said. Yeah. Hand up. That's all. Until right now, when you sort of passively, aggressively caught out Kamara and got back at him just no, a second. No, no, no. No, I'm kidding. No. And by the way, Dennis Allen is killing my guy, Andy Dalton. But whatever. Keep going. Your guy, Andy Dalton. <laughs> Do you know, uh, you know, he's gone four games without a pick. Peter, no big deal. You could talk about it a little more. They have a they they have a they have a chance to make the playoffs. We're saying this on Thursday. We're recording this. If they win this weekend, they yeah. got a shot, man. All right. All right. Now we've gone off the rails. Break it down the same. <laughs> this happens Saints. every year. I bring up Andy right. Dalton and Saints you still talk. bring it back. Let's do a little recap of the year, what we loved, what we hated, best, worst. You know, we'll do all the cliches. Um, I want to start with something. We'll, we'll do categories. But oh, I like this. I, I, I mentioned this on the pod last week. Um, where when you do year end stuff, you sort of forget what happens the first like eight months of the year, everything. So there's two things I want to address. Let's start with this because it just happened. Let's get some perspective here. Where do we put the Raiders Patriots ending in terms of, I mean, that had to be, even though it just happened, you'd have to say that was like the play of 2022 in all of sports. No. You know, I was looking at some story. I di- I went through a whole bunch of stories <laughs> from this year, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to find something like because the the story of the year couldn't be four days ago. That makes right. no sense. There is nothing like the Sin City Miracle or whatever you're calling it, Raiders <laughs> or the Lost Lateral. Yeah. That is definitely. I'm a just play talking about year. a play, not a story, but a play. Yeah. Like there is nothing. I mean, there's I got Pujols to seventh hundred homer, George Pickens yeah. one hander, Tennessee yeah. putting the yeah. uh the, the goalpost of the river like that. Yeah, that no, there's big. I'm a I'm yeah. a I'm a diehard Yankee fan. I'm thinking Aaron Judge with his five thousand home runs. That no, thing yeah, on, that thing goal. went on for days. Yeah. I'll give you Shrigger, you're the football expert. Give, yeah. give us the so, perspective on that play. So, so we had a bunch of talk on it on Good Morning Football this week. Is it an all time play or is it one of those that, that goes down that's like a strange oddity? Here's why it's not an all-time, all-time one that we reference for 50 years. I don't think a lot of people saw it live. In okay. in in my house, I was watching 
Bengals, Bengals Buccaneers, Buccaneers yeah. on the local. Yeah. And Romo and Nance mention it on the broadcast. Like, oh, look, it was tied, and now it, or it was six million. Now it's it looks like the Raiders beat the Patriots, and you're like, wait, what? And then they cut to JB, and mm. then they showed the highlight. So I don't think a lot of us are watching it live. So to me, that's not the Minneapolis miracle where we all are watching that live in a collective, you know, town square and commenting yeah. on Twitter. This one was one of those, you saw the highlight, you heard the Kenny Albert call, you, you, you listened to the radio call afterwards, and we talked about all this stuff, but it wasn't that moment. Mm. If you weren't a Patriots or Raiders fan, you probably weren't sitting on the couch and collectively watching that with everyone. Now, a moment that I think was big, and tell me, uh, Pearl, you're a F Philadelphia sports fan. I feel like that Bryce Harper home run yeah. was, was massive, and I'm not even yeah. a baseball fan, but everyone, what was the scenario with that one? But everyone was freaking out about that yeah, one. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, a great slam to win a playoff game. It's, I mean, gigantic. I had that on my list too. By the way, one thing, um, Peter, about uh, you showed a play today of the New Orleans Saints running back, yes. a lateral uh, that was incredible on Good Morning Football. I couldn't believe it. I don't remember. 2003. My, I think we, because of social media, everything that happens now gets blown up out of proportion. Like, there have been right. plays like this that just now feel bigger because of Twitter, I think. Yeah, the only so, thing was, uh, it was Jaguar yeah. Saints, and it was uh, a pass from Aaron Brooks to Dante Stallworth, who went back and uh, played a Michael Lewis, who then lateraled it to Jerome Payton, who then gave it to Deuce McAllister, who then laterals it they score and then they miss the extra point to send it to overtime it's one of the craziest games ever but it happened in 2003 with the new orleans saints and we forget about it yeah. um i don't know well, if this one has the lasting power that we might think it does today I, good point i agree with you i would say this too you can probably make the argument that the end of the bills vikings game was wilder than the Raiders Patriots with the fumbled snap at the goal line. It was nuts. You also have the whole Paul Allen thing of it. Yeah. With, and and the, you had the catch with Jefferson in the middle of that game. That, that to me is one of the games, you know, for a regular season game, obviously play, you know, postseason is a whole different story. Um, but that for the regular season, probably the best game of the regular season. Probably. Yeah. Probably. yeah. The thing about the Chandler Jones, Jacoby Myers thing, I kind of wish Chandler Jones didn't pick it off because I wanted to see what Mac Jones would do at that point. He's like all by himself on his own 30. If he catches that ball, what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is going to happen? Oh, my God. No. I was thinking, Ramondre Stevenson, I thought he might run it in because he got that to like 40, 30. I, I was yeah. actually live. It was crazy. I know. Yeah. I would just say the, the, the real lasting thing, why it's got a little special taste to it is because it happened with the Patriots. Uh, head coach on those sidelines like that's the last thing you expect right. and yet the miami miracle this miracle that's two plays in five years that are just inexplicable yeah. losses at the final seconds i had a buddy of mine matt dollinger who i used to work with he's now at the ringer um he asked he's a big colts fan and he had asked me does the jacoby myers play eclipse the all-time famous colts fake punt yeah the fourth is like yeah. the dumbest play in nfl history and i said I think it's an apples and oranges thing because the Colts thing was like a design play call, whereas the Patriots thing was on an individual player. So it's a hard comparison. I said, I think the Colts play is the dumbest play of all time and the and the Jacoby Myers is the funniest of all time. I mean, no, <laughs> the other way around. Colts funniest, Jacoby Myers, dumbest. That that would be my how I yeah. sum it up. What hey, would, look, give me your comparison of those two? That one happened again. I'm all about context. That one happened on a Sunday night game, mm. Patriots Colts, and everyone's watching, and they're sitting on the couch together, and it was two great teams, Patriots and Colts, obviously franchises of that era, and it happened. So I'm going to say the Colts one and the Patriots one. We, we're going to probably mention maybe more, but again, I yeah. I don't know, man. Pearl, what play do you think is more ridiculous, the Patriots or the Colts fake I punt? I think it's the uh, the Patriots game is going to go down in history. I think that's that's the last one. By the way, I screwed up. Bryce, I called it a grand slam for Bryce Harper. I've been out of the loop researching this. Like Phillies fans are going to kill me. It was a two run home run. Peter, don't put me on the spot like that again. I'm sorry. I'm totally panicked. I'm sorry. Yeah, bro. I'm you can't not talk as good. Baseball in December. That's what happens. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, also Good Morning Football been showing the Dwayne Rudd play too. Um, yeah, rip the helmet off. Rip the helmet off, right. and it's like. You know, Jimmy, I've been betting a lot more this year. The, the pain you feel, and you know this your whole life, like 
the pain you feel when you have a team and they blow a lead like that. Like I, the Broncos, for example, this year, if you bet on the Broncos and you saw what they did against the Colts and stuff, I mean, it's like hard to keep your blood pressure down. The the way you people lose football games are the strangest. Can, can, can I ask a question? I don't yeah, know who sponsors sure. all these podcasts. Yeah. I'm not a gambling person. I don't yeah. bet any money, and I it's never really been my thing. I know you guys both dabble in it. Do you listen to the people who are on like these shows who are mm. like giving advice and touting advice? Do you have any value in any of them, whether it be Barstool no. or whether it be Pat McAfee's crowd, like whatever it is? I see it all over Twitter. Like here's this boost in this play. Well, no, that's thing. different. Okay. The boosts are different. Yeah, what a, yeah. So what a boost is, because it's it's funny, J.J. Reddick had a boost on DraftKings last week, and I direct messaged him and said, thanks for the boost. I made some nice money there. And he wrote, you know. Um, <laughs> all a boost is, is all these people have deals with these camping. Like J.J. Reddick, has, his podcast has a deal with DraftKings. Um, McAfee's with FanDuel, right? Yep. So basically, they come up with a prop bet that they offer people. Got with it. like good odds. It's just like yeah. a, it's like it's like going into a store and there's a, a sale or a discount. Yeah, got really, it. All right. But well, what about the people who are like, here's my pick of the day? Yeah, yeah that's all bullshit nonsense. OK. All right. Because yeah. I used to go yeah. back to the New York Post and read that shit. And I used to yeah. those guys tout in their lines. And I, you know, the guy's like, like Skipper is going to say this, you know, and it's like, OK. Um, no, like, like, yeah. My favorite thing about the posting, I think it was the guy's name was Richard Witt. And he would do his picks every Friday. And then at the bottom in every small type, it'd be like season record 36 and 54. Yeah. And you're like, he's got to be honest. Um, but you listen, you're reading his column. Do they still have a Newsday? Like Tom Rock used to do it for Newsday. And they used to have one a week in the New York Post, like a fishing column. Do they still have that? I don't, I haven't seen a newspaper uh-huh. in a long time. Do you even remember though I'm those, old. Jimmy? You'd be like, I do. I do. Like column. Tom Rock was telling you about how the fish are biting out in Oyster Bay this weekend. Yeah. So I, I used to, I used to work for College and Pro Football, which was like a newspaper. And it looked like, I don't know if you guys remember it. It was like newspaper style. And I had to write like big gambling advice on like big sky football. And yeah. I like, and I went, dude, I had 36 and 54 would have been a good season for me on, on yeah. West. So one guy said, Oh, are you Andrew Perloff? I've been shorting you all year. And he bought me a beer once. So yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's tough. I think all sports gambling comes closer to 50, 50. If uh, I don't know if there's data on that, unless you're a real sharp, you know, then it's I- hard. Every time, one of the things about Perloff that I always, when yeah. I, like we have this connection, I always think of Dr. Z when I'm with Perloff. Uh, we both yeah. work for Dr. Z. Yeah. And I got to just, I'll tell you this really quick gambling, like this, the most typical Dr. Z story. I used to edit his mailbag for SI.com and he didn't, he never wanted anything changed. He didn't want anything edited. Anything you changed, you had to tell him. It, even if it didn't make any sense, you had it. And one day, I think I changed something and didn't tell him. And he calls <laughs> me on the phone screaming and yelling and cursing and you're this and you're that and i'm not doing this anymore and we've got to figure this out and this is both and you did this and it, it slams the phone <laughs> 10 minutes passes the phone rings i go hello he goes do you like the jets plus three this week <laughs> it's like nothing happened uh, yeah. it was the greatest it's one of my all-time favorite <laughs> si.com memories that's great I want to talk about another NFL story that I think is one of the biggest stories of the year that happened at the beginning of the year and everyone perhaps forgotten about. Right. It's a little bit of a serious story, but it's, I think it's hysterical because of who's involved. Can we remember, because it happened in the calendar year of 2022, and it's because it's Bill Belichick. This is why it's great. When he texted the wrong Brian. <laughs> to, and instead of texting Brian... Dayball, he texted yeah. Brian Flores congratulating him on getting the Giants job, which then caused this whole thing about that. That, if I'm not mistaken, Schrager, you would be the expert on this. That's how the whole Miami plan mm-hmm. came out, right? With Brady yeah. and Sean Payton. Yeah. What, let's go to Schrager for this since he's the insider there. Give, give a little breakdown. Yeah, and synopsis I mean, of all that. it opened it opened Pandora's box, and you know it, it was revealed once they did an investigation on it that. Brady and Sean Payton had come to you know some sort of contact about potentially taking over the Miami job once you know the Ooh. season ended, which already indicated that Flores might have been already on the way out. And then of course they looked into that and said, okay, well let's look into it even more. And then Flores, uh, you know, made the case that you know the tampering and and not not only that, the tanking for Tua, all that stuff. And it's why Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, is currently not a lot not on the sidelines uh, as he's waiting his time for the suspension that he's been having going, but it might be a laughing matter uh, with social media and millennials, yeah. but like the league was, was none too pleased. And of course it, it revealed some, some uh, harsh truths about what was going on behind closed doors. Well, here's why it's Wait. a laughing matter. Then I'll, I'll go to, I just to clear it. It's a laughing matter because of two things. One, 
and I'm I'm being a hundred percent dead serious here. I'm not trying to exaggerate. Outside of like a, a a terminal illness or you know something with my family being sick, my biggest fear in life is sending a wrong text or mm. Slack or email to the wrong person. So the fact that Belichick did that makes it. And then he signs his text BB. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Amazing. All right, Perloff. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, there's two very different stories here. The Brian Flores case is very as serious as it gets in the NFL. Bill Belichick texting the wrong person cracks me up. That's and the, yes. Yeah, yeah. Bill Belichick is, and this year has been, I'm curious what you guys think. Like, this has not been a good year for Bill. This whole Matt Patricia calling the offense coordinator. Right. I feel like the since the Brady Belichick split thing happened, he's kind his legacy is slightly going down. I'm not saying like Russell Wilson going down, but it's kind of going down. And I don't know how he picks it up exactly. Well, I you, just you, you know, you listen to to Bill Simmons, who's pretty plugged in in yeah. the Boston area, and he's talking with Seth Wickersham from ESPN, who's as plugged in as anybody when it comes to high level conversations. And it's hey, the word that you're getting now is that. Robert Kraft is 80 years old and wants to win. And, you know, I need some answers. Like what's going yeah. on here. So I don't know about his legacy ever being tarnished, but I also, I'm actually torn on the word legacy in general. Like Belichick has done it all. He's got the rings. Like you could coach five more years, coach no more years. I don't think anything matters at this point. Yeah. It's all, I, it's all gold to yeah, me. That's true. You are 1000% right. If yep. Bill Belichick coaches for 10 more years and never wins a game, it sh it should not affect the right. fact that he's won seven goddamn Super Bowls. Like, what yeah, you it's like the Michael Jordan Wizards years. Yeah. Nobody talks about those. Six, it doesn't six mean Super Bowls. It. He did not get yeah. the seventh. Brady yeah. has the seventh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I love that story. Um, I I understand it's a serious story in the end, but I love the story of Belichick texting the wrong guy, the wrong Brian, signing. Well, the, what's you know, the story of Brady and uh, Peyton behind closed doors while Brady's still playing for the Patriots, talking to Sean Payton, the coach of the Saints? That's incredible. Also, I know, unbelievable. And that's one of the things Brady has never addressed. That one, be curious. Um, well, maybe if he becomes your colleague at Fox, you can grill him about that. I thought we'll see. Um, yeah. Are we still going to be in the business when he retires and he actually goes stopped. to Fox? Yeah. He's got to retire first, Jimmy. Yeah, I don't Tom, know Tom it, it's enough now. He, this should be the this should be the end. Um, right. And I love Tom Brady. I just want to see him in the booth. You want to? Do you have any stories either of you want to mention from the year as like a biggest media story uh, impact? Well, if you don't, we can move on. But I want to give you the floor here to mention something if you want. Uh, well, I kind of <laughs> saved. I went over your questions overnight. I think there's maybe this isn't the time to introduce it, but I think there's a trend that has started this year that is going right, to let's do trend. Well, hold that because yeah. I just yeah. want to since we mentioned Brady, yeah. I just want to piggyback on this. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to discuss with you guys is the most absurd sports story of the year. And I want to just say for me, and I've said this many times in the podcast and I will keep saying it, the media reacting and covering Tom Brady as the mass singer was a low oh. point. It was okay. a low point in sports media yeah. and everyone who ever did anything about it should be embarrassed for the rest of their lives. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, the you have singer. the most absurd story. Yeah. But wait, I have one media story too. Uh, Go ahead. Alan Shipnut getting Phil Mickelson on the record about live is one of the great, you know, the thing. And then Phil denying it's, everything. Yeah. But that he said, <laughs> yeah. these are tough guys and said what they did. And then launching this alternate golf league. Like if, you know, that's just ins the whole thing is insane. And the whole live thing has just been out off the trails, off the rack. It's gotten a lot of publicity, but it's had no impact, I feel like. No. I, I Peter don't doesn't it. care about live golf, I can tell. I, I fell asleep when he started talking about golf. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> oh, You're are you one of these guys like I heard the name Alan Shipnuck and I started yeah. Googling like his name. Yeah, no, I know he's a big writer. I'm just kidding. I'm but, being, oh, being but are you one of these guys that just puts golf on when Tiger's on a like late Sunday afternoon and he's in it, then you put it on and you're like, No, oh, I don't it's Tiger Woods. Uh, I don't put golf on at all. We're good. Oh, okay. Let's keep All right, on rolling. <laughs> all right. All right, Perloff, go to the media trend you want to discuss. Oh, okay. So this is a little deep, but do you guys see Winning Time on HBO? Yeah. Yes. Loved it. It's the first time they've ever made a dramatic show about a team or a season that really just worked from every part of it. So if you could do that with the Lakers, with like the best actors in the world, the best directors, are they are they going to start picking off teams and trying to do real high end things about Funny you say uh, that. Yeah. Funny yeah, you say ahead. that. I had Perlman on my podcast yeah. and I asked him, I said, oh, I mean, I'm thinking of the 90s Cowboys like yeah. right away. Like. And he's like, I've already sold the rights to eight of the 10 books I've written. 
to be made into TV shows already. So think about if that's talking about, you know, the 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 Shaq Kobe Lakers or the 90s Cowboys, but it opens the door. We had Ryan Leaf on today on Good Morning Football, and I'm talking to him about the whole draft process and his stories are crazy. And I'm like, and I don't want to give this intellectual property away on your podcast here, but I'm like, that 98 draft was Charles Woodson, Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf, Randy Moss. I'm like, mm. Would you not watch an eight-part series of actors talking about all the different teams and deciding how the 98 draft is going to go? And Peyton Manning saying to Bill Polian, if you don't draft me, it'll be the biggest regret you ever made. Like, I I don't know. Hell, I would watch all of these shows. I thought Winning Time was awesome. Winning Time, shut out at the Emmys. No nominations, Mm. nothing. One of the craziest things uh, of television. And I don't know. I can only get worked up by so many things. That one was was one that was like surprising, but I (laughs) forgot about it three seconds later. Yeah. I, I learned not to a long time ago not to get worked up about awards, but the guy who played Magic was great, and obviously, yeah, um, and that, but uh, so here's a question for you guys. Off that, would you, if you had to pick one, would you rather watch a Winning Time show where it's actors giving you the mm. real life, whatever, uh, the real life happenings, or would you rather watch a Thirty for Thirty? And this is why I'm asking. Like you, I loved Winning Time. Don't get me wrong. Loved it. Watched every episode. I agree with what you guys said. But when I'm thinking of like the story of a team, like you mentioned Perloff, like, are we going to see more of this? For me, one of the greatest things in the history of sports, and to this day, still the greatest sports 30 for 30, of ESPN 30 for 30 of all time is the U. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. the U. And part I, two. <laughs> yes. So like, to me, I still like the documentary form of it better. But what about you guys? <clears throat> well, I'll let you start. <laughs> I was going to let you start. Because... I don't know. It's a case by case basis. Before winning time, it was documentary by a mile. Right. And, you know, I'm actually going to give myself a plug here. The movie Hustle is also part of this, too. Like it actually filmed basketball in a fictitious way Mm -hmm. that didn't look stupid. That's the first time I've ever seen that. So I think I'm still going to lean doc, but I think that the, the fiction drama is catching up rapidly. I think that that had never happened before this year. Most times you see a sports movie and the sports action stinks and the story seems contrived. I think it's going to be, that's rapidly catching up. I'm actually going to go with the winning time formula. I think the last 20 years and it starts with 30 for 30. And of course it actually starts before that with HBO sports and Ross Greenberg and their group doing everything from the name doc to the bird and magic doc. I think we're sports docked out in a little bit of a ways. Like I think I've seen every topic mm. covered inside and out. We've seen uh, 30 for 30 shorts. And I know the fine documentary uh, makers out there would say, bullshit, go watch free solo or bullshit. Go watch uh, this new one that we've did here or go watch the last dance. Like we could always one off each other, but um I kind of thought this was a new medium and I was kind of excited mm. by winning time. And when you put, you know, here's the other part of winning time that rubbed a lot of people wrong, including Jerry West and magic Johnson. I mean, it, it took a lot of liberties with the truth. So then what becomes mm. the document, what becomes real life? Now I would say the same for some of these sports documentaries, you know, when a player produces his own sports documentary when Naomi Osaka, whoever has their own documentary or Serena Williams or Michael Jordan or Kevin Durant, when they do it and they're producing it and they have final edit, um, you're also getting a, a different lens at it. So right. I don't know, unless it's an independent, like, you know, Ken Burns has taken a deep dive on it for the most part. Uh, I'm going to say I would, I'm okay with either one, but I've seen a I lot of sports documentaries. The topics might have, uh, we're, we're hitting that point here where we're now boiling over with topics. But uh, I, do, you guys see, do you guys see the Marty Fish doc this year on Netflix? I did. I, did. I was that, in it. You were in it. That one blew. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I texted you immediately. That blew mm-hmm. my mind. And it's funny because of Marty Fish, that like, that's not the, 1998 that's Yankees. A that's a good so point. So I think I think it, it depends on subject matter and story. But like Jimmy, yeah. you liked the Jeter one. You were raving about the Jeter one. I didn't think that did anything for me. There's a little bit of a, you know, personal. Uh-oh. I'm not objective on that one. But wh- here's did the you thing. learn anything new? I did. I did. I didn't realize how much he, him and Brian Cashman hated that's true. each that other. That was a good episode. I watched all of it too, and I, I invested yeah. the time. That's why if you're investing six hours into something, you want it to be the last dance, and that's such a. There was hard... a great moment in there when they covered when David uh, Yankee outfielder dropped a pop up, and David Wells was threw his Curtis? arms up, and, and and Jeter said to David Wells, "We don't do that we shit do around here. here." That was good. That was good. Um, but Perloff, you offered me a great segue because we'll we'll stick mm-hmm. with talking about shows from this year, sports, non sports, whatever you want to bring up. I loved the Manti Teo doc. And you uh, made the awesome. mention that, no, you made the mention that, um, who was you in the Marty fish doc? Shrek. I was also in the Manti Teo. Doc. And he was in the Manti Teo doc. I freaked yeah. out when I saw that they showed an old clip of him talking about Teo on one of the new shows. Um, 
I think I'm a little biased too because I was in that world, the dead spin world and mm -hmm. the internet world and all that when that story broke. But I thought it was fascinating to finally see how that all went down. So I would say for me, that was one of the best things that came out this year was the Manti Teo doc on what? Netflix. Go ahead. I think that it was produced by the same people who did Marty. It Fish. was. It's all in that next yeah. sport. They do a great job yeah. and they find topics that are are not necessarily the yeah. obvious ones. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll give you even I can top this whole thing. That oh, blow wow. Fire. Okay. So the people who did that also produce a documentary called Why Wild West about Oh, the more the, the church out there, the cult. Uh, the Bhagwan Rashnis in Oregon. Yeah. My uncle was a one of the founding members of that cult in Oregon. And I knew Wait, every what? single dude. Yes, I figured I had to spice this up a little bit. Did you My just uncle, say your uncle was in a cult? A founding yeah. member. He was with the Bhagwan for decades in Oregon. Yeah, that, there you go. Did, <laughs> did, did you have contact with him? Or was it yeah, like, yeah, no, like our wacky uncle? No, Sam. he was great. He wore orange robes. Uh, yeah, no, there was totally. What were their he, core beliefs? I'm what, looking for, what, I'm was looking the for the what was the theme of the cult? What was the theme of the cult? You've seen Wild Wild West, haven't you? I have, or, but or, uh, it's a close to a Buddhist, uh, Buddhist oh, okay, sort of. Okay. But it was this gigantic commune in Oregon. I would totally suggest it. But the point, I think, the underlying point is they are unbelievable documentary makers, and when they turn their focus to sports, they got Manti Teo, Marty Fish, The Malice of the Palace. So I think if you have like great producers behind it, Peter, they still feel fresh. I hear you. I agree. Yeah. It's a it's yeah. a craft, and a lot of those sports production companies that work on them, they are yeah. they're amazing right now. So I agree. Yeah. It's great. Depends and he shows you it. guys want to shout out and mention that you saw in 2022 that deserve a little pop. Sports, not sports. My mm. favorite show on television gets no love anywhere, and it, it involves Philadelphia in a lot of ways. Do you guys watch Dave on FX? Oh, Dave is the best. He went to the same camp I did. <laughs> <laughs> Little Dicky. Dave is amazing. Do you even know what we're talking about, Jimmy? Have you seen? I Dave? do. I know it. It's on like my list of things to you, binge. I think this show. I, I don't. I don't throw this around. I think this show is freaking awesome. And season yeah. two was so good. And it went to like mental health and it went to, you know, the, the social justice and some of the stuff that we talk about and we don't talk about an everyday level. Like, I just thought Dave was so good. And then again, the Emmys come out, nothing, shut out, nothing. And yeah. the actor's name is Dave Bird. His rap name is Little Dicky. The yeah. music's good, but like just awesome. I think uh, Santino, the redhead guy, Andrew Santino yeah. plays the Amazing. manager. Fantastic actor. Like, the, do, how about the Doja Cat episode? That was amazing. Jimmy, if you watch one episode, just watch this Doja Cat. Oh, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about uh, him. Well, no, I don't you know. do that's like a, I won't do that. If I'm OCD, like I got to watch from the first episode and then watch everything. Bro, it's fantastic. That. You'll laugh yeah. your ass off, and then yeah. at the end, you'll be like, and I just think, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't fit a, a lane. Like there's no, like the Prestige right. TV is not talking about Dave, and then it's not on regular channel five or channel two. So it's not right. like you're getting the Chuck Lorre crowd either. So you got to seek it out. I think it's great. Well, My I answer think, to this yeah. question, I want to. I just want to say it quickly because I don't deserve to even be part of this discussion. I, the fa my favorite thing that I watched in twenty two is old, and it did not come out in twenty two. It came out years ago, but I never watched it until this year, which was Succession. I love that oh, show so amazing. much. Yeah, that's yeah, an old timer. How so, excited are you? I am very excited. I'm. I'm glad now. I'm ready for the next season. It's and amazing. So, that's the best thing I watched this year, but it's not from twenty twenty two. Pearl, off, go ahead. Oh, uh, Succession's up there for me. Yeah. Any any FX show. Peter is amazing. What we do in the shadows. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't. Vampire I haven't. Good. Uh, th it's beyond good. It's Taika Waititi, the famous director. Does yeah. it. It's there's a scene that'll make you specifically laugh about getting your kid into private school this year. That, is, uh, <laughs> but I think the bear was on FX. I'm not yep. sure. Bear was yep. on FX. I didn't see that. Great. I didn't yeah. see it. Everyone loved yeah. it. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, people. Uh, I love the show called Station Eleven on HBO. It's a serious one, but. Uh, Righteous Gemstones, amazingly oh, funny. Oh, love it. Love but it. Did, it, did anybody see the offer on Paramount about the yes, making of the Godfather? Yes, of course. Of course. Oh, I could not wait. Every episode, boom, boom, boom. I watched boom. I See, I binged it, and I watched yeah. it all at once. I thought Miles Teller was fantastic. I thought the woman who plays, uh, who's in Ted Lasso, she yeah. was great. Matthew but, Good is uh, the, the oh my producer. God, amazing. He's great. As Robert Evans. So yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that show was excellent. Bobby yeah. Cannavale's son plays one of the heavies in that one and he's fantastic too like, oh I, really I wow it. yeah I yeah, loved yeah, it. yeah yeah <laughs> i'm glad so, you brought uh, up the bear because uh, that was probably that's the best 2022 show i watched really I it was a half hour long everyone loved it yeah. but I yes see it. And, and very easy episodes there's only like eight it's very easy to get through it's a little yeah, okay. tough i found it a little like it's one of those shows stressful like, stressful stressful 
I like uh, White Lotus season two. I found oh. stressful. Like all these shows, I'm such. A, I know you watch. I loved my favorite note of the year was Peter sitting with Sean McVay watching White Lotus season yeah. one. Yeah. that was amazing. Just Look, he's, on, he's on his bye week. Season yeah. seasons <laughs> lost, and he and Veronica they invite me over their their house. Very nice of them on their bye week. And I'm like, oh, please, let's not talk about like, Rams football. And he's like, well, let's watch a show. I'm like, have you got White Lotus season two starts in a couple of weeks? You watch it? Like, no, we binged the whole season together. Me, and his wife, and him <laughs> eating takeout food on his on his couch in his you know castle out in California. It was great. But White Lotus season two was even better than season one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the bear is great, and um, I wouldn't put it as a best show. But if like you want your brain mess with. The Nathan for you. Uh, the rehearsal. Oh. The rehearsal. Oh. The rehearsal. But Na- the rehearsal. Oh. Like I still don't know what the fuck it was. I have no clue. But I love it. I love. I, it. I watched you know, every listen, episode. I listened yeah. to a podcast called. Uh, it's called The Watch, and it's by the Ringer guys, and it's two Philly guys, Chris Ryan and Andy Greenwald, and I believe their guest was a guy named Sam Esme, who does other shows, did Mr. Robot, and he said the rehearsal was his number one show of the entire year, and I couldn't argue. I thought it was crazy. Uh. Yeah, it was awesome. I'm a huge, huge fan. And and you know, I I become friends with some people who are in Hollywood. All stuff like Nathan Fielder is a mystery to everybody. Like yeah. they've, he's been wow. offered roles in movies and he's turned them down. Like wow. no one, no one knows like really all the deal. There's a mystique to him where everyone's like, he seems like he seems he seems like a calmer Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, a little bit of Tom Green. Yeah. You little know, Larry, da- little Larry David, maybe little Ollie like G. The yeah, he's a mix yeah. of all that. Yeah. yeah, but if I mean, if you go back for like people who are young, I mean, oh, the Nathan. Andy Kaufman shit was wild. What yeah. Andy Kaufman did back in the, I mean, there are some stories there that are unbelievable about him getting his alter ego to be a character on Taxi. Like it's you, you just yeah. go YouTube it. It's crazy. Yeah, um, Man on the Moon, good movie. Jim Carrey. I'll throw out some categories. We go rapid yeah. fire here before we wrap up, and and just whatever you guys want to say here. So. Uh, we did sports show. We did non sports show. Do I want to do sports a- media. Give me some sports yeah. media. Let's yeah. talk about people. Right, give world. me, give Let's me bullshit. a new, sp- a new sports media thing you love this year. All right. I I have never uh, been a barstool guy. When I say, I mean, I see their stuff, but I've never like followed barstool where it's like I'm one of the stoolies. I've never been that, and yet I respect the business model and all the stuff. This year, I got sucked into this guy, Frank the Tank. I don't know if you guys watch the Barstool stuff, but this Frank the Tank is a diehard Mets and Dolphins fan. And I think he's the greatest thing to hit sports media this year. He is so passionate and absolutely freaks. And they have these live feeds of them all watching games together. So you've got all the familiar faces, the big cats and the and the El President and the, and the you know Dave Portnoy and all them. And then in the front seat is this guy who is a guy like Jimmy – we know these guys who live in Queens and they watch Ugh. every game or wherever he's from in Jersey and they just live <laughs> and die with every pitch. And it's, it's like, you know, I used to tune into Francesa at one o'clock on a Monday after like a terrible <laughs> giants game or a Gi- or a jets game, just to hear the misery. Like in the, this is in real time. So his name is Frank, the tank. I think it's NJ tank 99 on Twitter, but like they have found gold in this guy. And it, it's i'm not laughing at him I'm, I'm laughing with him i think he's hilarious i think he's the best like i enjoy watching a true authentic sports fan, not someone who's got 17 brands behind them and is trying to muster up a social media following right I Jimmy, got you. You had, peter you had a great tweet about uh i know you i think you went in studio with part of my take yeah that that feels closer to howard stern right now Bro. Than, than everything and i think honestly i'm good friends with big cat and i think he gets a ton of credit he's a freaking genius p and uh pft is a genius too can so i tell you something about those guys, guys what i respect yeah. not yeah. to make this a pro barstool commercial or anything those guys like big cat's got kids and he's got like like mm-hmm. you there's nothing you want to do less than fly to toledo on a rainy friday night and be at a mac game and yeah. you're like and they go on the road like when i see like i I travel and I travel because it pays the bills and I love what I do. But like to see those guys at like a fight in Vegas in the morning and then a Mac game at night and then sitting in the office where it's a big sty and they're watching like I respect the hell out of all those guys who travel and get on the road because boots on the ground is hard. Like it's very easy to say. I'm going to skip this rough and rowdy fight in, you know, Mohegan Sun on this Friday night. I'm going to stay with my family and they go. They work it. I, I respect the ethic. It's good. Yeah. Pearl, if you have a new sports media thing you want to shout out. 
Well, you did it in your column, so I feel like I'm totally biting off you. But yeah. New Heights, the Kelsey Brothers podcast, it's the first time so I think a, an active, and I could be wrong, but like really an active player podcast has hit like that. And I think it's, I'm, I'm an Eagles fan, so Jason right. Kelsey has always been my guy. But it is incredible. And I saw, I think it's the number one sports podcast right now. Just yeah. to, to see that take off. I heard this week Travis was saying that he walks around and there's signs everywhere. So I I, I like it a lot. I think it's a, that that's the big development to have an <laughs> active player podcast done the right way. It's I like, was really yeah. hesitant because yeah. I don't know Draymond Green. I don't know if he's had a podcast in a month. Like at first it came out yeah. hot, and it's like it's hard when the season starts. And yeah. I understand that it's a commitment even for us who don't play. Yep. But these guys, they get good guests, and it seems like there's not a lot of dead air. They just kind of are who themselves, but. There are so many, uh, you know, active player podcasts that kind of fade during the season because they can't say anything. They've actually been saying stuff, which is pretty impressive. So what yeah. Perloff wrench, what Perloff referenced is that I wrote a media awards column for SI.com and I gave New Heights, Jason and Travis Kelsey podcast of the year. One of the things I find fascinating about it is what you guys said, current athletes. And they're talking about current things on other teams. Like they did a whole segment where they were laughing their asses off at the Raiders Patriots play. <laughs> like for current players, that's you don't see that often. So I love that podcast. I'm glad you mentioned it. I gave it podcast of the year. I'm gonna give a little new sports media thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out Schrager's partner in crime on Good Morning Football, Kyle Brandt, and kiss his ass a little bit. Let me hear. Let me hear. The weekly Josh Allen interview. Now, listen, yeah. everyone, listen, this is like a big thing now. Quarterbacks with the weekly yeah, news. Yeah, but yeah. Here's, here's, the, here's the part of it. What he does with Allen with the movie reviews is phenomenal. For people who don't know, you know, Kyle's in his 40s. Josh yeah. Allen is like 12. <laughs> and Josh Allen hasn't seen any of the 80s and early 90s classics that we all love in our age group, including Kyle and us three. So each week, Kyle gives Josh Allen, who you can say is, you know, one, two, three best quarterback in the NFL, and he's doing this every week. He, wa he gives him an 80s or early 90s movie to watch, and then the next week, Allen reviews it. First of all, the fact that Josh Allen would take two hours to watch these movies is yeah. a credit to Kyle and, and Josh's commitment to the show. It's, it's Kyle Brandt's basement. That's the show. And then he comes out with these reviews, and... It, that, I think this is what we want more of from athletes. I don't need to hear Josh Allen telling me how he got Stefan Diggs open on a crossing no, but route. I Jimmy, got that's it. The I thing. He's not going to talk about that anyway. Right. So it's Kyle's like, I've got this amazing opportunity. And I talk to Kyle every day. Kyle might be the person I speak to most in my life. And I love the guy. And he got this amazing fish. Like, and when I say that, like when you're, when you're in a podcast, like to get Josh Allen every week, this is your right. He, he's the, but so many, so many shows come up with hokey, Bro, bits that, but the how many years have we heard? Genius. How many genius. years did we hear local FAN guy with yeah. Eli Manning and you, they don't say anything right. or local? It's almost a labor. Even you know Tom Brady has his own podcast. I don't think he's saying much that's you know worth. Yeah. Josh Allen, Kyle has found a way to unlock something from a yeah. current player and do it without. And it's I feel like I know Josh Allen better from listening to Kyle's right. podcast, right. and I like him more. It's a great, wow. you know, when I, when, when, when we were in offices at SI and I had come back in 2017, I became friends with a lot of the young, I mean, younger guys, like people who haven't watched Seinfeld. And there was one guy, Chris Chavez, who I'm good friends with. And I, we had <laughs> always said like, we should do a podcast where it's like the old guy and the young guy. And yeah, because I don't, you know, like I get mocked because I don't have Spotify. They've never watched Seinfeld. So like what they've hit on <laughs> with Kyle giving Josh Allen these classic 80 movies that we've all seen and he hasn't, it's just a phenomenal concept. Well, yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you compare it to McAfee with Rogers? Because they, they don't have the structure. Well, I'm talking. But I'm specifically talking yeah. about the bit with the movies. The interview oh, is a oh, whole different saying. thing. The thing because with McAfee and Rogers is eh. that's a huge deal. Because I got to tell you, is every it still? Week, is it still? Yeah, because, yes, because we listen to it every I disagree. week. There's always a sound bite. Of I, Aaron I, I feel Not like about Pat's football. great. No, about I feel like aliens. Pat's yeah. great. No, I don't know. I feel like Pat's great. And last year was it was a confluence of. The COVID, the, the, is he coming back? Is he not coming back? I feel like, you know, what's Kyle going to bring for season two with Josh Allen? You know, like, right. I don't know. I feel like the, the Rogers yeah. and McAfee thing is great. It's an amazing get, and I'll listen to it every week. And we use the clips. Um, but last year was, I mean, that was the story of 2021, right? Oh, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a very, very unpopular opinion. I don't even know if I should say this. Oh, don't say it. We don't need to be negative here. Let's be. Po let's talk offline if you got negative. Come on. Are you actually well, fine? Tone it down. What do you got? <laughs> I, I'll i say this. I want to say this. I think a lot 
less people like Aaron Rodgers now than they did, say, a year or two ago? Really? And I feel oh, like that was all Twitter and that's overblown. I feel like – you really uh, think so? I, I think he's turned – and I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about – the ayahuasca and See, I think that makes him. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die because yeah. I like what. No, I like no, that no. Stuff. I, I, I like I that just, stuff. Can you I come back Peter. to the real world for five minutes? Yeah. Like, what do you want? This whole you thing want? about like football is all about my relationships with my team, and and then like even the whole thing with him ripping that article from the Athletic. Yeah, I didn't see that. There were twelve weeks. people quoted. <laughs> what are you talking about? That sounded like a mistake, yeah, Kellen Keller. Kellen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it wasn't, but it, no, no, if it was an entire article with unnamed sources and he was like, well, how do these people know this? Then, okay, that's a legitimate criticism. I think she he made a mistake. From, I don't think he read the article and just assumed it was anonymous. I don't Well, but don't that's know. the whole thing. His, yeah. his whole shtick of I hate the media, the media is the worst thing, but I'm going to fuck with the media and play all these games with the media. I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, I, Wait, it's you guys, not amusing anymore. Do you me. guys think he'll be, if he ever followed Tom Brady and wanted to be a oh, broadcast? He'd be, he'd, he'll, he'll be, be in the Fox studio very he'll soon. Be, and he'll be fantastic. Yeah. Because yeah, he'll, he'll say it like it is. He's not going to be, be Jimmy Johnson's replacement at Fox. Oh, well, you I think don't know about that. Studio, That's not games. That's my prediction. Studio. Wait. Studio. Studio, not games. It's okay. right. be, Jimmy playing yeah. a little sports executive. Well, first of all, here's the thing about the games. You can't, he can't call games unless these teams, unless the network's going to go three men booth because. Every booth is set for the next five years. So, yeah, they could add him to like Sunday Night Football if they wanted to and make it a three man booth or, you know, but I think he's going to do studio at Fox. That's my prediction. Okay. okay. Um, sports media MVP. Do you want to discuss this or do you want to? Skip yes. It? Let's discuss Good. this. Good, Schrager. I'm going to say a name that you see on your TV <sighs> on Thursday nights, on Sundays. I know who's who helps be. who helps in an editorial fashion like you've never seen before from a host that is always prepared, the energy person, the let's all get together on a Saturday night and get dinner because that's what will make us closer person. I think Carissa Thompson had an unbelievable 2022. Carissa Thompson got the Amazon hosting job and that show is as good as any pregame show in their first year. And I know she's the Pied Piper, the ringleader of everyone. Let's get together. Let's go out. Let's get dinner. Let's make this thing happen. And she is working with rookies on that Amazon thing. Richard Sherman has never been on a TV show. Ryan Fitzpatrick, never been on a TV show. Andrew Whitworth, never. Gonzalez has been around, but is not going to necessarily be the one who's working on the rundown in the morning. And then she gets on a plane, comes to LA, and does the same exact thing on Fox, and then does the game rig. I think Carissa had an amazing year, and her podcast with Aaron Andrews is very entertaining. I'm giving Carissa Thompson, unsung hero, never gets any love as far as these, you know, sports media, like bring out stars. Carissa just chops wood. It's not about her. It's never been about her. And I'm honored to work with her. I think she's a lovely yeah. person and I consider her a sister and a friend. I, I'm, I'm giving her my love for MVP. Yeah. All right. Wow. Perloff, what do you got? Wow. Can I just say Carissa Thompson, Andrew Perloff, super fan. She is. So I, I she's a fan of you. Her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're working the back. Sandler movies or from, way back from no. Patrick. Okay. Just yeah. 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 Uh, no, she was, she was, <laughs> when you hold that boom mic, is that what? Okay. Go, 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 go. Uh, she was uh, really close to Dan Patrick. Show. She's the best. That's a great one. You know, I, I feel a little weird because there's some, there's some guys who are the goats who like, like I'm going to take Dan Patrick out. His show is still amazing. By the way, they're going to beat you in the Emmy this year, Peter. I know I'm ready Dan for Patrick it. Show. It's and a better I show. Have, <laughs> I've been nominated five times for a sports Emmy. I'm leaving. I left last year. They're definitely going to win the year I'm not there. I'm positive. Yeah. So just, Peter, that, that, don't even that's try. That's the subtle humble bread. That's it. Show, that was Edger and no. James with the Colts. No, no, no. no. He loses, then they win. I've been nominated yeah. for five I Emmys, mean, motherfuckers. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. Well, Tiki, it's Tiki with the Giants. They're definitely winning a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to win the Emmy. And they deserve it because the show's amazing. Uh, Rich Eisen's awesome. Big Cat's awesome. All these guys uh, who are, I can't. Anyway, Labitar's amazing. Um, 
Jalen Hurts is going to win the NFL MVP because he does two things, right? Okay. So I'm going to go, and you had this person in your comp too. I think McAfee deserves it this year okay. because of the transition to game day, which is incredible. So he does all his FanDuel stuff, and then he gets sets on the set of game day like he has been there for 20 years. And he's, he was born for that role, by the way. He was yeah. born for that role, and he gets along perfectly with Corso and Herbie. Just to, to in a really, and I'm a huge game day fan. I and that could be game a tough day. spot. He's coming yeah. in with Corso, yeah. obviously, in yeah. the, the the final years of whatever he's going to be yeah. doing on game day. Yeah. And he shows respect. He kisses the ring. Like that's the only yeah. way to go about it. I respect yeah, yeah. that so much from Pat that he actually I, defers I, to Corso and understands I, I, what that is. Corso's a wonderful guy too. So that makes it even better. I and also everything else he does, the Daily mm. Show, he's got a Howard Stern feel too. You know, he makes it a, a group thing. Incredible. Uh yeah, I'm a, a big fan. And he gave up his Friday night SmackDown gig to go do game day, yeah. which of course you would do that. But I'm just you know, he was carving out that career. And obviously, if game day comes calling. You know, you got to do that. Jimmy, um, what about you? Who'd you say your MVP was? You know, I, I do think, I do think McAfee probably had the biggest year. I mean, he got that enormous deal with yep. FanDuel. I think his show is now known for just not being like the Aaron Rodgers interview show. I think he, the guests he gets are, are, are outstanding. But he's got like, like, like he's got a crew. Like Boston Connor and, you know, those right. guys, they're like. But that's the Howard Stern formula. You need a crew. Yeah, I like that. It's you need boys. a crew. And yeah, absolutely. And there's like the hijinks between them is what's cool. I also think I, I wrote this. No, I didn't write this in the column. I did not write this in the column. I talked about this on last week's pod with Brian Curtis a little. I don't know if it necessarily falls into like the MVP or who had the best year. But I thought this was a phenomenal year for Joe Buck from this standpoint. Yeah. I hear you. Him and Troy made Monday night a big deal again. Yep. They also, I mean, ESPN has searched for a Monday night booth for so long. I mean, they had Tariqo and Gruden. I was never a Gruden guy. So, you know, then they went through the disaster of Booger McFarlane, poor guy on a crane. They had the Levy greasy Riddick thing. Didn't catch on for ESPN to stabilize that booth is a huge deal in the business. Mm. Fans may not care about it, but for ESPN now where they don't have to have, themselves get bludgeoned every Monday night for four hours is they a big paid, deal. They paid $3 billion for Monday night football. They'll gladly right. spend 50 yep. million on the right guys. And I've said this a billion times. The listeners are probably like, I didn't watch the Manning cast this year because Joe and Troy Ron, I just left it on. And I also found it fascinating when the world series was going on and the playoffs, even the all-star game, baseball fans were like, where's Joe Buck? I miss Joe Buck. Mm. I think this is like the year people realized. And the, the, the hatred of Joe Buck has dissipated each year. It used to be a big Twitter thing. And, and I think it's, it's, it's definitely gotten better. But I thought this year, 2022, people realized with the switch from Fox to ESPN and what he's done for Monday Night Football, not doing the baseball, I think people realize that he is an all-time great. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's and he's a fantastic dude. Like, oh, he's even the stuff they had, I and mean, he's funny. Like, they had a right. thing on um, Monday Night Football where they're like, why is it always in the hunt? Like, why are the playoff teams in and then in the hunt? I hate that. Let's yeah. change it. So now it's call me maybe. And like, they just have fun. They're good. Yeah. And our show, Good Morning Football, loves those two guys because they've always given us love on those Thursday night promos. And right. like Joe Buck will randomly check in with me and be like, hey, I think Jamie Erdahl is doing a great job as like your new host. I'm like, that goes a long way to like, you know, he doesn't have to do that. Joe Buck's a good dude. Yeah. Good Wait, dude. Let, me, let me ask you guys one guy who do, almost is in a way too big for the MVP conversation. Stephen A is a force. I mean, he is a huge, huge deal. Can we acknowledge that? It, well, he drives so much of ESPN in my he's opinion. He's a top dog. At ES I mean, they use him so much. I give a, so that's much. where I give, I give Stephen A massive credit for the work ethic. You know, Peter yeah. talked earlier about big cash store guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stephen A is doing that show Monday through Friday. He's doing NBA shows. He's doing Manning wow. casts. He's, I mean, and obviously for me, everyone who knows me or follows me on Twitter, the addition of dog, I never really watched first take, but Chris Russo going to first take, like yeah. I, it's the most entertaining two hours of television I get every week just because of Chris Mad Dog Russo being a lunatic and pronouncing everyone's names wrong and <laughs> being stuck in 1950. And, and I've gotten to know dog well off the air and, I mean, I think everyone says this, but when I tell you he is, there is no difference. There is no <laughs> difference. So when that whole thing happened, when Jim Nance mentioned my name on Thanksgiving during the Lions Bills yeah. game, I mean, I got yeah. so many, I, I, it was, was a off. day or two later and I said, I'm going to text dog. I want to get his take on this. 
So I texted him and I go, did you hear about this? He goes, no, fill me in. So I send him the clip and he just writes back, boy, Jimmy, good job. Attaboy, and you hear his voice. Whatever I have a is, question, uh, though. There I, have is, a question. I don't think there's anyone. And I say this including you two, who I know super well. There is no one in this the business that like is more talk. the same on air than off air. Let me ask you this one. Because, all right, internet's a, a cesspool a lot of times. And yes. I think I think you said you direct message with J.J. Reddick. I like J.J. Reddick on TV. I love J.J. Reddick. I think he's great. When J.J. Reddick did what he did to dog and was talking oh. about... Did that not make your stomach turn? Like, no, no, JJ, you're one of us. Like, no, no, dog is a different thing. Like, don't, don't, he's not the guy you want to go after. Like, what was your take on all that? Oh, well, I, I said I had a, well, you know, dog had a great take on that. Cause when he started, everyone was like, yeah, JJ Reddick dunked right. on this old white guy. And I'm like, right. yeah, he did. But like, but you don't understand. But like, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. So when that happened, so when dog took that gig, I said, this is going to be interesting because the people around the country, I was not know about the people on the show, but the viewers, who don't know his shtick, they're going to be in shock for a little while till they get it. <laughs> like he's talking and, about Bob Cousy because he's right. passionate about Bob Cousy. Yeah. Right. He's talking about Otto Graham because he knows about Otto Graham. Uh, yeah, it's it's 100% not an act. And Dog had the right attitude because I've ta I've talked to him about this and he always says, he talked about it on this on the pod that I had him on. He said, you know, he's like, I don't expect J.J. Redick Bouncing around, this is his word, bouncing around North Carolina. <laughs> or, but, you know, <laughs> pass, imagine around Duke, pass around Cameron Indoor, listening to, Mike and the, listening to Mike and the Mad Dog break down the Yankee bullpen. He goes, I get it. He doesn't know. You know, I think now they have a better relationship I'm after sure that they initial. they do, but like that you know. first clip, and then to like, oh, yeah. it was like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Like pick on like, you know, there's a yeah. million others that like might be out of touch, but Dog is one of like our guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, that shout out when Jim, Jim Nance, by the way, another, just the best, the nicest person I know. I use, I'm Isn't it ironic that what? the guys who have the most success and the women in the, who have the most success yeah. in this league also happen to be in this world? That's going to be pretty good people usually. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, see, that's Scott Van Pelt the same way. I mean, all the, like the, the guys. Have, have the you, level. have you crossed paths with Ian Eagle? Have you crossed paths with Kevin uh, Burkhart? These are minches. Yeah. These are wonderful people. Yeah, yeah, Aaron yeah. Andrews is lovely. Like the people at the top of the game. Not only are great at what they do, but they treat people well and they yeah. care. Well, that's what it's about. It's how you well. treat them. And that matters. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 100%. D D Dan Patrick that way. Lebitard's that way. Like guys who can – like I like the guys who get to a level of success and then employ people below them too and keep yeah. – you know, raise the boat like McAfee's doing now. That's huge. I, I mean, thought Lebitard yeah. also yeah. Had, a, yeah. had a really – impressive year from the fact that he you know you leave espn you go yeah. out on your own you got to do everything you know he has a great he has a good deal with DraftKings, and it's interesting you know with him and mcafee you know where so much of the show is youtube uh you know that's a big development there and, and audio obviously yeah, that's huge you know for you for for dan lebitard and his crew to leave espn and look like they have the same level of success away from espn it's impressive when you can do that you know it's funny because i work on you know linear tv Good morning football, the NFL behind it. And I said it, a lot of our stuff, what goes what goes seen is what's online, but also <clears throat> like on a on a Monday morning, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't I don't need to watch ESPN or anything like I'd rather listen to Bill Simmons and cousin Sal talk about the games. Uh, and I think if you just best. you turn on a microphone sometimes and it's just two friends talking, like yeah. that might be what people want and that's what we liked with Mike yeah. and the Mad Dog. We're not looking necessarily for professional studios and I think a lot of the executives focus on the studio and the 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 look and feel of the like I, you know at the end of the day i think a lot of people just want to see two friends talking and, or four friends talking at a table and that's what good morning football is we don't have crazy graphics we have four people at a table and we just talk about the games and show the highlights and it, it usually works okay have you guys heard of this chat ai i don't know if you've heard of yeah the new one it's chat g it's not chat ai it's oh, chat yeah chat gpt so Never people are saying it. uh, it's this incredible AI application it's where you can open ask, AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you can say, just, I fancy myself the tech guy too. Just go on. Yeah, it says you can put in. I did this the other day. Should college athletes get paid? And it, in thirty seconds, it spits out a thousand words. So someone said to me, it was like, oh, they're going to replace all the sports talk people and all the sports writers. I'm like, no, because I think people like the personalities, just like you said, Peter. Bill and Sal talking like no AI can do that. It's not the quality of arguments is necessarily. It's a relationship that plays out. As well. I think, I think podcasters are going to be fine. I think, I think what it is is like college students are not going to be able to cheat easier because you could say, give me an essay on, you know, yeah. last of the Mohicans and why that movie mattered in 1991. And they'll churn out a thing. But like, I, I think that, you know, people talking, there's always going to be a place for that. 
Speaking yeah. of people talking, we need to wrap this up. Is there anything you want to say? Get off your chest about 2022 sports media. Anyone you want to shout out? Anything you want to say? This is yes. the time to do it before we say goodbye. Happy New Year. Welcome 2023. Shamelessly, I want to talk and give great gratitude and thanks to everyone who works on Good Morning Football. We had um, some changes, not only on air, but our our you know a big wig on our show, Tim Brown. He left and he took a job with Omaha, and he's doing great things with, with Peyton and Eli. We've had producers leave. We've had all sorts of changes, and I think our show is as good as it's ever been. And I cannot say enough about Jamie Erdahl and Jason McCordy, my two new hosts. If you if you watch our show on a regular basis, thank you. And if you don't, I implore you to do it. <laughs> They're both awesome. And uh, I'll tell you what, Kyle and I have been the day one guys, but like the show is humming. And uh, we won the Emmy last year. I don't care if we win, we're nominated or anything. The Emmy's not going to validate it. I'm having as much fun on this show as I've ever had. And Jamie and Jason are just amazing people. So not uh, easy that's, for that's, Jamie and Jason to step oh, into the, those roles and you, do what you should done. see. You should yeah. see their Twitter feeds every day, yeah. the first yeah. month. And yeah, they yeah. just stuck to it and said, you know what? This is my job. And I'll, I'll give them both credit. They both want to be here and they love the show and they were fans of the show before they got here. So that's my shout out for the end of it. And Jamie, it meant a lot that you said that Jason was the replacement of the year. He's done an incredible job filling and for Nate, unfortunately, we still get Nate. Nate's on the show on Mondays right, and Fridays, right. and it's great. So um, I just want to shout out those two and yeah, everyone absolutely. behind the scenes also. It's, it, Nate, not an easy guy to replace. So that's why I thought. So dynamic. Geez, yeah. Pearl off, well, what do you got? If we're doing this, I mean, I got to thank uh, Maggie Gray, Jimmy, who you're good friends with. Yep. We all work together at Sports Illustrated. She left WFAN to start a new show with CBS Sports Radio and handpicked me. And she's an incredible talent. And it's been so much fun. Uh, we got this incredible boss who you guys would get such a kick out of named Spike Eskin, who's I know, know his pops. <laughs> yeah, I know you know Howard. And Spike is is very different person, but he's incredible. Uh yeah, so I love I've loved being at CBS Sports Radio. Chris Olivero, Bruce Gilbert, shout out. Uh it's been an amazing year. Three times this year, Peter, I had Jimmy fill in and co-host when Maggie oh, really? was on vacation. Ah, yes, I'm kicking myself. The three Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think we we might have. Oh, we probably called you, but, you know, you were traveling or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so fill in host of the year, Jimmy Trainer as well, who came nice. on and literally made me laugh for three hours. So, uh, yeah, no, it's been a great year. And Jimmy and Peter, it's I'm so glad. I, you know, shout out to you guys. I love Good Morning Football. Jimmy, I listen to your podcast every week, too. I, I appreciate that. that. I'm glad we were able to do You know, we haven't seen we haven't seen each other together because of COVID. So we got to change that. We used to I, go to PJ Clark's down there yeah. in, in lower Manhattan and just sit and just bitch about our, our careers. But I feel pretty good this year. I feel going into 2023. We're all in a good place. Mm. Yeah, I do too. Absolutely. Pod's done great. I should shout out Shelby, my producer. Since What's you up, Shelby? Shout out. Shelby. Shelby's awesome. Is a huge, huge. I don't mention him enough, but he's a huge factor in the success of the pod. And we've had a, probably the best year we've had with, you know, the guests and everything. So, and, and the listeners. So, uh, Shelby deserves my shout out there. So, that will wrap up the third annual Schrager Perloff Trainer Roundtable to end the year. Happy New Year. Stay yeah. safe. Don't drink and drive. 2023. We, we'll dis- a lot of things going to happen in 23. Flex to the N- Monday Night oh, Football. Yeah. The Ooh. NFL Sunday tickets on Google Tom YouTube. We don't know. A lot, of, a lot of sports media changes for us to s- discuss one year from now. So okay. we will do it for the fourth year. But uh, thank you guys for doing this. I appreciate yeah. it. I know you got tight schedules. Pearl has got the radio with... CBS Radio with uh, Perloff and Maggie and Schrager's doing Good Morning Football. He's got his own podcast. He's got Fox. So this was uh, very nice of you to take the time out in this busy holiday week. So thank you. Happy New Year. And I'll talk to both of you guys soon. Thank Thank you, you, Jimmy. All right. All right. My many, many thanks to Peter Schrager and Andrew Perloff. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a review on Apple. Send me a tweet if you liked it. Sal will be back next week. Uh, Go into the archives. Listen to any episodes you've missed. Brian Curtis from The Ringer last week. Greg Olson two weeks ago. Richard Deitch three weeks ago. Mike Tirico, Kevin Burkhart, Joe Buck, Jim Nance. All recent weeks on the SI Media Podcast. All right. Happy New Year. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Take care.